Hello and welcome to part 4 of my Hypercube build. So I finally got it working. I'll show you an example of some of the prints from it soon. And um, it's not too bad so far. So thank you to everyone in the previous video who helped me with my Z-axis lead screw issue. It was just incorrect wiring of the motors in the end and the Z-axis now goes up and down perfectly. I've not been running the heated bed it's all wired up as you can see the thermistor is under there as well as the connections to run this off 12 volts. I just wanted to make sure that the printer was working reliably enough rather than uh, having to heat up the bed and cool it down every time. I in the end didn't use the inductive sensor I've been using this normal mechanical end stop and the adjustment for, for that is here. I switched to the 8mm sensor with the potential divider method to run it off 12 volts and it just wasn't triggering reliably so I had to get rid of that because I have some 3 mil glass on top of this and it was very close to the to the bed and it wasn't always triggering so I'll sort something out for that soon hopefully get auto bed levelling on as for the extruder I've just got this simple Belden type I found on Thingiverse I'll leave a link for the person that designed this in the description and this is going to my homemade spool holder and if you've not seen this design before, all I did was get a paint roller, uh, broke the handle off it and screwed it into the block of wood and this works perfectly, spins really freely, not had any feeding issues at all and there's room for another spool on there if you want so that's one way of doing it. The main issue I have with this print at the moment is the fact that it's very loud getting a lot of binding noise and I've been changing these stepper driver currents and tried everything there but the problem still persists. I've added a 12 volt fan to try and keep them as cool as possible. So I've ordered some new ones. I've got some DRV8825s and some normal A9A8s. Uh, I was also having an issue with the layers shifting and this was because the belts are quite tight at the moment so I don't think it was the tension issue but rather that these poise are not very well made they are um, chrome plated which means that the teeth aren't as perfectly matched to the belts as they should be and as this was changing direction quickly the play was just spinning and causing the layers to shift so I had to lower the acceleration quite a bit and was printing quite slowly so I've ordered some new stepper motors some new drivers and pulleys and belts and I will install them now and see if it makes any improvement at all okay so I'll just run through what changes I made so I've swapped out the motors for these new um, better and torquier ones than the ones before. They are the same size however but the um, specifications are a bit different. Got these new aluminium pulleys on. Seem much better quality and a much better match to the new belts. I've added these pulleys for the idlers as opposed to the bearings that were being used before if that focuses uh, the heated bed works well but uh, just taking it off whilst I print some more things don't really need it all the time and I've added these new drivers they're just A4988's again I wasn't getting any current across the DRV A825's for some reason I don't know why yet but I'll try and find out but these 
stepper drivers and motor combination works very well and it is so much quieter than it was before. I'll just give you an example of that. I printed these test cubes at each stage of when I was uh, fine tuning the printer and the end result isn't too bad really. Initially there was some under extrusion issues, the layer shifting issue which was resolved now with the new belts and motors and this is the, the one I did a few days ago and in terms of its dimensions and everything, if I grab a micrometer here, it's it's not bad at all. Um, so quite happy with that in terms of its accuracy. There's still some artifacts on the sides. See if we can get rid of that somehow. And also some I've never got this X to print properly. I don't know whether it's a issue with my hot end in terms of it kind of leaking plastic everywhere or a, a cooling issue maybe but that'll be something I'll look into. If anyone knows why then please leave a comment. Uh, the Z turned out nice and there's no gaps in the top layer which there was before. This one is a different one what Tech2C used in one of his videos. The circles and uh, it's kind of a half semicircle, a half sphere, I mean. And they were they turned out nice as well. There's some rippling after. Uh, again, try and fix that somehow. So these are just two examples. I tried this compressor wheel. The bottom layer is very nice, and the accuracy around the the bottom is very good indeed. However, the main issue here was on the as it gets to the top of the the veins, it's a bit starts to get a bit blotchy, and I think that's because of this cheap hot end just uh, oozing plastic. Really, um, I think that's. But apart from that, it's turned out very nice, very accurate. This is just one of these hollow vases that a lot of people do. And again, not bad at all in terms of the sharpness of the corners. There's still some, a bit of rippling on here. You have to catch the light though to see it. Bottom layer was good again, stuck to the bed well, and the wall thickness was all, all nice. Okay, so that's it for this video. So the plan is now to, to change, to try and improve this as much as possible. I'm going to use some stuff from the Hypercube Evolution, designed by Scott 3D. It's got a good solid way of attaching the hot end to the X carriage. I'm going to add a, a case for the ramps board, an Arduino, to try and keep everything underneath. And a bracket for the power supply as well on the other side. Connect the LCD display up and just try and fine tune it to get the best print quality possible. So, uh, thanks very much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already. And see you in the next video.